اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ان الحمد للہ والصلاة والسلام على رسول اللہ وبعد بلوڈ برادرز اینڈ سسٹرز السلام علیکم و رحمت اللہ وبرکاتہ All praise due to Allah, the all-forgiving and the most merciful, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who has enabled us to be here tonight in this beautiful gathering, our weekly series. We continue from where we left last, uh, before about, about four weeks ago. Uh, today we are going to do the tafsir of Surah Al-Tariq. Apart from that, inshallah, there would be some announcements to be followed later, bi-idhnillah ta'ala. Surah Al-Tariq, which has been recited by uh, the brother right now here, and uh, it is one of those verses, as we are in Juz'am, which is mostly memorized by most of us, if not, then definitely we have had it, definitely we have had it in our lifetime. A tariq is from the word of Taraqa, and from that comes the word Mitraqa, the hammer. Tariq means a knock. Taraka is the, 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 the one who knocks, or the actual knocking, and the Tariq is the one which has been knocked, the thing which has been knocked. Here, it refers to the coming and the appearance of the stars at night. Wasamai wa Tariq. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala vows, takes the oath by Asama. What Tariq? By the heaven, which is a sama, and by the Tariq, which is the night comma. Here it refers to that bright star. Scholars have differed, Al Mufassirun, which one it is. Some they say it is Zuhal, others they say it is Thurayya, and some they say it is Jins. And Nujum. So Zuhal normally they refer to a Satan, Satan, which is the seven on the road to the sun, a big star. <laughs> and those who say Suraya, Suraya basically refers to a group of stars, which can be multiple <laughs> groups, and um, some of them they translate it as Pleiades, which is a group of stars up to seven stars, it may be more or less, and it is, you will find it in groups schooling around on the heavens, you'll see the brightness coming up there, so that is referred to normally as a Thuraya. The third is, it is Ismu Jins, meaning the actual stars, be it whatever, wherever, directions, the sizes, or the distance, it doesn't matter. Was Sama Iwa Tariq, and we know that the stars, they come at night. It does not mean they come at night. They are always there, but we can see it at night. In many of those stars, the light which comes to you possibly was there a million years ago. Because due to the distance and the traveling time which it takes for it to come here, Subhanal Khalik al Azim. Allah swears by wa sama and wa tariq. Whenever you start to swear with something, when you say, Billahi, وَتَاللَّهِ وَاللَّهِ وَبِالرَّحْمَانِ وَبِالَّذِي خَلَقَنِي وَخَلَقَكَ وَأَوْجَدَكَ When you start, وَاللَّهِ وَبِاللَّهِ تَاللَّهِ You have not said anything yet. The person in front of you will be really totally focused. The, what he is going to say after has to be something very important unless you are one of those every second word is Wallah. And it never happens. That is different. For a person who is never being heard of saying it, or a person who does not joke around and takes everything as a joke in his life, where even he is not allowed to, for these kind of people, that's different. But here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he says, wa sama'i wa tariq. Not only that, wa ma'adraqa ma tariq. Do you know what really tariq is? I've been explaining about it, isn't it? An najmu thaqib. It is the star of piercing brightness. So it could be any of those stars which has that kind of brightness which comes to you. They are more brighter. I, I, many of them are brighter, more brighter than the sun, more bigger than the sun. It is only due to the distance between us and them that we think 
and look at them as if they are so small. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after an najmu thaqib in kullu nafsi lamma alayha hafil. There is no human being but has a protector over him or her. Being explained that they are the angels, there are other explanations, being that they are the angels in charge of each and every human being, guarding them, writing their good deeds and bad deeds. We know that there is something called Qurin, a companion, who is with me and you and everyone, but they are our enemies, with no exception. Each and every person has a Qarin. And he is the biggest enemy of yours. That is not a neighbor whom you had fight with, not if you end up in some form of misunderstanding with your spouse and for that hour she is the biggest or he, the biggest enemy for you. No, for you as individual, for each one of us, yes, there will be time when another enemy will be more difficult than this enemy, but in general, they are the only ones who would be with you ever till your death. <laughs> Scholars, they differ what happens to the Korean after. Is it that they go end up dying, or are they given some other missions to focus on? Wallahu alam biswat, there is no evidence supporting any of those, it could be anything. But what we know, Qareen is always with us, and we do know that the hadith in Sahih Muslim, even Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he was asked, Hatta anta ya Rasulullah, even you? Naam, naam, yes, even me. Ghair anna Allah a'anani alayhi, fa aslama, fa aslamu, fa aslam, three various narrations of it. But Allah helped me, so I am free of him or that I am protected from it, or that it has accepted Islam. Fa'aslam, fa'aslamu, fa'aslam. Subhanallah. So you see this Qareen is with you, and he is the real enemy which paves the way in front of you to make you commit every sin. Every sin. How does it manipulate you? Known best to Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. There are certain things physical which we can explain. So much of the spiritual side, leave alone the spiritual world. In this world, so much of our spiritual side, we cannot explain. Yes, And the knowledge which you have given is so little. They ask about the soul, the ruh. Say it is from the affairs of Allah. Till today, the scholars have not been able to really decide what really all ruh is about, the soul. Subhan al khaliq al azim. Decide on it, meaning to agree on one thing. This is the ruh, and that's it. Like we all agree what is heart. When we say the physical heart, we all know what it is. Physical eyes, we know. Nobody says this is eyes. Everybody says this is eyes. So in that sense, I'm saying there is no one view taken and that's it. فَلْيَنْزُرِ الْإِنسَانُ مِمَّا خُلِقُ When Allah has given these angels, now their duties are, wallahi, not only to come and record. يَتَعَكَبُونَ فِيكُمْ مَلَائِكَ بِاللَّيْلِ وَمَلَائِكَ بِالنَّهَارِ فِي صَلَاطِي الْفَجْرِ وَالْعَسَرِ كَمَا نَعْلَمْ The angels which come. As we have mentioned multiple times, this is nothing new for us. We all know this hadith. They come in every fajr and every asr. What do you mean? They come and they go like a tourist. La. Those who were with you in fajr, they go back to Allah. In those in uh, fajr, they will carry on with you till asr. The other shift started in asr as we prayed our asr. In, and then these new angels which are with us, are they the same ones who keep on coming and going or every time they are shifting the changes and the shifts and this? Wallahu alamu bisawam. But the thing is they are here and we believe in it. Without that you cannot be a Muslim at all. Their duty is to record. The advantage given to the one to record your righteous deeds compared to the one who is to record your sins. The moment you come, uh, do something good, it's recorded and written. 
The moment you start to plan, something exciting starts to happen. Whenever you do something good, the minimum, if accepted, is 10 times. Say, for example, you did something, the reward which you deserve for that is 1,000. Minimum you will be given is 10,000. It could go up to 700 times. If Allah wants to bless you more, it can be even more than 700. Whereas, this angel who records on your left, you will only be given the single. If that sin is thousand sins, you will only be given thousand and that's it. You know what is more bonus to that? فَأُولَٰئِكَ يُبَدِّلُ اللَّهُ سَيِّيَاتِ بِحَسَلًا The moment you repent and act upon righteousness, those whatever the angel had recorded, thousand, millions, whatever, would be taken this side and becomes your reward. Subhanal Khaliq al These are the duties of the angels. If you plan something bad and you don't execute it, it's never written for you, as if you never planned it. Planning means plan, plan, really you want it to do. Not something comes in your mind. Uh, that's, you are not responsible for. You can't control your uh, stray mind going here and there. It's so difficult. So difficult. Subhanal Khaliq al then Allah reminds us, after mentioning so much about the tariq, as-sama, the tariq, and what it is, what it does, and then a reminder that we, minos, in this dunya, who think that we want to rule this world of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, one of the smallest of the planets of Allah, in which we are in few billions, and we think that we are the superpowers in everything. And then we think that we can overrule anything we want. La Allah, it's not possible. Allah reminds us, فَلْيَنْظُرِ الْإِنسَانُ مِمَّا خُلِقُ So let men see what he is created of. We all know scientifically, medically, and we're known to those who were before the era of science, basic knowledge, the, the, the more intense part of it, most of it we know now, but there were things which Allah had mentioned, and they are in the... Uh, ayat of the Quran and the saints of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. فَلْيَنْظُرِ الْإِنسَانُ مِمَّا خُلِقَ Remind خُلِقَ مِمَّا إِنْدَافِقَ You have been created from water gushing forth. The water, which is not referred to more as a sperm in a, in a technical term, and it is a liquid form, in the end, 95% of which has got amino acids and this sort and that and, and the uh, enzymes and the genes and so many things, the disability part of it, the, uh, the, the positives and the negatives and everything which comes from the entire body, plus the uh, liquid part of it which is in this mem, uh, that comes from your entire body of that person, the human being. It's not just from one part. <coughs> Proceeding from between the backbone and the ribs. The backbone, we all know, it's at your back. That's uh, the actual part which makes you stand straight. And those who start to lose it, or they have difficulties in this, they know best how much they suffer due to that. And the ribs, ribs are also known. Now, Today's science, when they go in and they try to analyze this, from between the backbone and the ribs, and I had a thorough study of this when I was recording the lectures for the master's program in Ashubhat wa Radda Aleha, that uh, the uh, misconceptions against the Quran and, um, and the rebuttal of it. And this was one of those verses which I had taken in that particular uh, module. Yakhruju min vayni sulbi wa taraib. Now, today's science, they, 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 they mention this about the backbone, where it comes, your, your sperm, and it stays there uh, between, the, between the ribs and the coccyx, and that is where it stays. It is, in fact, a product of your entire body. And then from there, it is educated as the consummation of the marriage takes place between a husband and a wife in a legal Islamic form. يَخْرُجُ مِنْ بَيْنِ الصُّلْبِ وَالتَّرَائِبِ The mention of the ribs and the taraib, the backbone, is this is where it is resting, subhanAllah, and from there it gushes forth, and it is being mentioned by Allah. In today's science, they say that exactly the way it is medically been proven is basically covered in these two simple words, which is not simple, by the way. إِنَّهُ عَلَى رَجْعِهِ لَقَادِرِ The one who created you 
from a water gushing forth min bayni sulbi wa taraib between the backbone and your ribs when you were nothing and then you became something do you think that after you perish he cannot retain you and recreate you from nothing of course you will be from ajab wa but the thing here is that is told you were something that is nothing to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala verily allah is able to bring him back to life as we know that many of the kuffar they denied it in in the lifetime of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and before him and those who came after and allah has made it very clear that that is very easy for him subhanahu wa ta'ala as we see that wa qalu a idha dalalna fil ardi a inna li a inna la fi khalqin jadid na'am na when we perish we die are we going to be recreated indeed definitely we all believe in it yawma tubla sarair the day when all these secrets deeds prayers fasting etc will be examined as to their truth we all know the day of reckoning yawm al hisab yawm al aqab and whatever is going to happen and we all are going to be definitely reckoned on that day so our recreation is not only for the matter of uh, matter, uh, ma- uh, for the matter of showing the mighty of allah that look guys you were all gone you were old you were this and that and now you are recreated there is a purpose for your recreation if you want to really think of it in that way that because you are going to be reckoned and then rewarded for what you have been doing when you were created fama lahu min quwwatin wala nasir then he will have no power no any helper subhanallah no judges no money no lawyers no advisors no secretary no drivers nothing you and your hisab and aqab but remember subhanahu wa ta'ala the one who is wala yadlimu rabbuka ahada when you have done what you had to then definitely allah is there for you was sama izati raj'a by the sky which having rain clouds and give keep on giving you the rain continuously one after the other which gives rain again and again raja raja means to retain back so was sama idati raja which keeps on retaining back it's not the sama which we need here but it is referring to here though the sama means the heavens but here it refers to the clouds which keeps on coming back and giving you the ni'ma of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the form of rain wal ard zati sada and the earth which is splits with the growth of trees and plants we all know about that also so much of lavish vegetation the trees which gives us so much of produce in in the shape of fruits and vegetables and other things which we enjoy to sustain ourselves with innahu la qawlun fasl verily this that is the quran is the word that separates the truth from falsehood and commands the strict laws for mankind to cut the roots of evil wama huwa bil hazl now allah makes it very clear look guys this quran is not a joke the commands of allah is not a joke not to be taken lightly but something very serious remember when i recited those verses in the second rak'ah of our maghrib and the amana which allah had given and the, even the heavens the mountains and everything they said we cannot fa hamalaha al insan we said we are here to take it la hawla wa la quwwata illa billahi al aliyyil azim wa ma huwa bil hazl and it is not a thing of amusement or for amusement innahum yakiduna kayda then allah refers back straight to those and here it's mostly focused on though it applies to any time to anyone innahum yakiduna kayda verily they are but plotting a plot against muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam wa akidu kayda and i too am plotting a plot that's allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then allah says fa ma hil al kafirin am hilhum ruida so give a respite a time for them let them be to those disbelievers they think they are on the creep and leave them for a while and leave them for a while this mostly focus though it applies as i said to anyone any time 
this year more specific in the lifetime of Rasulullah in the era of Makkah when he became a prophet as we know at the age of 40 then he started to spread the deen of Islam very few who became Muslim starting from Khadija radiallahu ta'ala anha Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anhu Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu and so forth as we see that these things started to develop and the deen started to spread Kuffar Quraysh they did not like it and there are so many incidents where we see that they continuously plotted against against him alayhi salatu wasalam, not only while he was in Mecca but even after migration 460 70 kilometers away from Mecca and yet they continuously tried to do as we have seen and it did come up in the shape of a uh, few battles which took place between Kufar Quraysh and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Some examples to show the uh, this what type of uh, how up to what extent they went in order to uh, stop the da'wah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Such as when, when in the beginning they started to say that this guy is majnoon, he is insane, he has got issues in his brain. And, and then if, when these type of things it did not work out, then they started to say he is a magician. So they will go and meet people even before they arrive in Makkah. And on the route they would say, look, there is this guy whom you people must have heard about. He is such a powerful magician that he, 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 if you hear him say anything with his magical spell in the words which he's going to utter to you, you will be under his spell and start to believe in him. So these kind of things they started. And then, of course, the other, the harm which they used to bring to him, such as we know one of the famous surahs known to all of us, Surah At-Tabbatira Abi Lahab. The, the, the chapter, the entire chapter is discussing about Ummu Jamil and Ummu uh, and Abu Lahab that they used to come and throw the, uh, the, uh, the pricks and other things, the death in the, uh, in the, on, on, the, on the way of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And when this surah was revealed, Ummu Jamil came, wanted to again harm him sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam was sitting with Abu Bakr. She came, she wanted to do something and she did not even see him sallallahu alayhi wasallam but only Abu Bakr and then Abu Bakr was sitting near the Kaaba with him sallallahu alayhi wasallam she's asking where he is your companion aina sahibak sami'tu annahu qad hajani la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah and then what Abu Lahab he wanted to one day um, kill him sallallahu alayhi wasallam with a stone uh, hit him on the head or wherever and then Allah sent that shape of a camel furious as if he's going to bite him or eat him up so whenever he tried to come to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam this camel came forward and some of the narrations indicate that that was Jibreel alayhi salam Allah made him uh, do that and of course he feared and he did not do it so many other insta instances and then in the end they plotted to kill him with the shaitan iblis the leader Ja'afi shakli shaykh najdi he came in the shape of a human being actual human being like from Najd from way away from the Makkah region that he came pretending to give them nasiha. Some they say, okay, we, we put him in a prison. He said, you guys, if you put him in a prison, he is going to get out somehow. Then they said, what about if we uh, let him go away, uh, exile him from uh, Makkah? They said, okay, the people outside, they are going to follow him. Then they said, okay, then uh, Abu Lahab or Abu Jahl, he said that what about if we kill him so we take one person from each kabila and every one of us we do exactly the same thing at the same time so the blood the responsibility would be divided and the Quraysh people Banu Hashim Banu Abdul Muttalib uh, would not be able to do anything to us that is what they decided on and then Allah gave permission to him sallallahu alayhi wasallam as you know to migrate and then the plots continued while he was in Medina but it became weaker and weaker and weaker till Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him so much that he prevailed over Makkah and Ahl Makkah and we know in the 8th year of Hijrah in the month of Ramadan Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted him the victory in Makkah ala Ahl Makkah in Surah Al-Nasr Iza ja'a Nasrullahi wal Fath which is in the same place in the Quran with Surah Tabatida Abi Lahab came and was revealed. Walhamdulillah. So you see all this continuously, Kuffar they did against him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Some of these things you can reflect and contemplate on when Allah said, Innahum yakiduna kaida wa akidu kaida. Allah delayed it for a while, then they were punished in this dunya. Fama hilil kafirin. For a while, then he is after they were punished with a sword. 
starting from the Ma'arakat Badr, the Battle of Badr, and then uh, the Ma'arakat Uhud, and Al Khandaq, and other battles which had taken place, and then Yawm Al Qiyamah, and in the grave, we know, Bi Adab Al Qabr, Wallahu Al Musta'an, A'adhan Allahu Minha, may Allah protect us from it, and save us, and guide us, and keep us on a Sirat Al Mustaqim, Sirat Al Ladi An'am Allahu Alayhim, Ghayri Al Maghdubi Alayhim, Walad Dalin. Wajazakullah khairan for listening and brothers a special occasion naturally indeed it is that our Sheikh Abdul Salam Hafizahullah he has been granted with a daughter we pray that may Allah make her swaliha taqiyya mu'mina Allahumma ja'alaha qurata'in li walidayha fi dunya wal akhirah Allahumma ja'alaha swaliha mu'mina mujahida wa mimman yas'awna li ridaqa ya rabbal alameen Allahumma wafiqha lil khair wa lima fihi ridaqa ya rahman ya rahim and also among those brothers, uh, as we know what has happened in Fiji, and the text has been going around that we are going to collect. We are, and we have started. So be among those who contribute generously. And as it has been going in the text, read it to see the guidelines for that. Try to make it as quick as possible so we are able to dispatch the containers as soon as possible. And then those brothers who have vol volunteered to go there and dispatch it to the needy ones while we are in coordination with the uh, Fijian government at the same time so that things are done legally and properly. And those who deserve it most to the needy ones, it would get to be Allah ta'ala. What is our And also in the end, as we know, tomorrow our camp starts, international camp. Uh, which is going to be in Cambridge starting tomorrow after Juma and finishing by afternoon of Sunday. So be part of those who have registered, be part of it, and those not. So try to at least be in the masjid so that masjid is not also empty. And we say ahlan wa sahlan and we welcome all those brothers who are here just for the sake of the camp all the way from Malaysia and then our neighbors, Australia, and those who would be here from Fiji tomorrow. Walhamdulillah. So a blessing of Allah that so many brothers are here attending this camp. May Allah give us the success also in this camp that may it be a form of unity and a form of success for us and nothing else. Wajazakumullah khairan. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Nashadu Allah ilaha illa anta nastakiruk wa natubi ilayk. And dina for the night has been provided by Shaykh Abdul Salam. Jazakumullah khairan. Please do enjoy it before praying Salat al-Isha with us. The difference between Qareen and Shaitan that it is referred to that that Qareen himself is part of the family of the shaitan. So the Qareen can be the shaitan itself? Not the main Iblis, no. His profile is too high to be a Qareen to you. Yeah, we, we all have one Qareen, he can't be multiple. So he is one, he is a shaitan. He, his role is basically to look after his entire kingdom, including those Qareen which we have. Uh, like me and we, we both are, you are Egyptian and I'm a Fijian, but we both are human beings. So they are certainly from the same clan, but one is Iblis and one are the children of Iblis, or whatever you may say. Jazakum Allah khairan. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Nashadu Allah ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruk wa natubi